Hello, everybody, and welcome. Um, welcome to uh, your virtual call chair. Um, it is a big joy to be with you for the night. Um, Matthew is my name, and I get to be your host um, and introduce some fantastic schools from you for you to hear about. Um, I'm going to go over just a couple notes, um, and then we can jump right in. Um, we get to get to all the good stuff. Um, a couple notes. Um, during this whole time, if you have anything to ask, the Q&A is turned on for you. Um, there's no set Q&A time, so any time is a good time to um, turn in something um, as they come up. Um, my only ask of you is you have, if you have something to ask for one school versus if you would like to ask the whole group to make a note of that, um, then, uh, then we know who to send it to. Um, with that being said, too, uh, your camera and microphones are turned off during this whole time, so we can't see you, we can't hear you. Um, your only role is to sit back and take notes um, and just really have, uh, have fun when you hear all these wonderful things. Um, this is session two out of three for the night, um, so if you haven't filled up your last slot, there's definitely still time, um, and there's definitely still a lot of really cool schools uh, to hear from. Um, we film all of these, um, this one and all of the rest. Um, so if you'd like to go back um, and watch it more, or if there was two you were trying to pick during this time slot, um, you can go back and catch this one live, watch this one on filming. There are options, options, options. Um, the link is at the bottom right. Um, I will show you that link once we end as well, but it's also the same link where you use to sign up. Um, so it should be ringing some bells. Um, let me show you the list and our plan for the night. We are in session E2. Um, where my mouse is right here. And these are the schools uh, you will hear from for the night. Um, with that being said, we should, excuse me, we should jump in and hear from those schools. So the first one being SUNY Maritime uh, College. Good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for joining. I will, as I start to share my screen, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Amira. I am one of the undergraduate admissions counselors here at SUNY Maritime College. And tonight I will be showing you a brief introduction about our college. Um, so to start off, this is a, a picture of our campus. We are a 55 acre waterfront campus located in, a, in the southeast section of Bronx, New York, in a neighborhood called Throgs Neck. We are approximately 30 minutes from downtown Manhattan, and pretty much right outside our gates sits the BX40 line, for our, for, which is a bus stop. Uh, so that can take you right to one of the main train stations that can take you directly into Manhattan. So it's a great proximity to not only the city, but also to Connecticut as well as upstate New York, which is great for skiing. So to go over maritime with, by the numbers, we have approximately 1800 students, which includes undergraduate as well as graduate students. And then we have 13 nationally recognized programs within science, business, engineering, and humanities. And all of our engineering programs are ABED accredited, which is the highest accreditation all of our engineering programs can receive. We have approximately 80 student clubs and organizations, 13 NCAA Division III varsity sports, and our average class size is approximately 21. So something that you guys are similar to seeing in high school. Something to note as well, we have a student to teacher ratio of 15 to 1. So it has a great personal relationship between the students as well as the faculty, so that if you're struggling in a class, you can always go to your professor for help. Uh, there is no shame in doing that. Uh, so we do encourage great communication between the students and the teachers as well. We also don't have any teacher's assistance or any um, uh, any of that sort because we do want to have a great education for our students. For we also do have um, approximately 11 undergraduate academic programs, including Bachelor of Engineering programs, Bachelor of Science programs, and Associates of Applied Science. Um, we do also have two master's programs, which brings our total up to 13. So our Bachelor of Engineering programs include electrical facilities, marine mechanical engineering, and naval architecture. Our Bachelor of Science programs includes three business programs in international transportation and trade, marine operations, and marine transportation. Marine environmental science is our only science degree, and maritime studies is our only humanities degree. 
Marine Technology is our only associates program that we have on campus. Our two master's programs in uh, international transportation management is our business master's program and our maritime and naval studies is our humanities master's programs, which are available for both fast track options. Our students are required to complete out, uh, one of three professional experiences on campus. So that includes the US Coast Guard deck license, the US Coast Guard engine license, and the professional internship option. So the US Coast Guard deck license, these students are learning how to drive or navigate a ship essentially. And they, th those students will essentially be working on the bridge of the ship, so the top of the ship. The U.S. Coast Guard engine license students, however, are getting their third assistant engineer's license. So they will be working in the belly of the ship, so in the engine room. Uh, so they will, won't will necessarily be on the top of the bridge. Uh, so it's a little bit different between those two licenses. The reason why we say U.S. Coast Guard license is because that is the governing body that uh, gives out those licenses. It's just like the DMV issuing our driver's license. So it's not a military obligation. It's merely just a license for those students to work and sail on a vessel. For the professional internship students, those students are not obtaining a license. They're getting their professional experience through an internship. So the students who are getting that license are getting their experience through uh, sea time, participating in uh, different classes that count towards that license. So something else to note, the students who pursue the deck license or the engine license are essentially double majoring. They're getting that license on top of their degree. The civilian students, however, are not double, essentially double majoring because they're only going for their degree. Now you see something called the Regiment of Cadets. That's something that overlaps both the professional internship option as well as the U.S. Coast Guard license option. Uh, so students who are pursue the license option must participate in the Regiment of Cadets. It is not uh, mandatory for the civilian students, but civilian students or internship students who are going for that internship option have the ability to participate in the Regiment of Cadets if they like a disciplined lifestyle. Again, it's not a requirement for the internship students, but some do like wearing a uniform, waking up early, working out in the morning. Uh, so it's not for every student for in the internship route, uh, but some like it. Uh, something else to note is that the students who are in the license program participating within the Regiment of Cadets do have to attend a 10 day indoctrination period prior to the start of their fall, freshman fall semester. Again, something that is required for those licensed students um, and something that is required for the regimental students even though you are going into the internship. So there's a bunch of different options if you want to pursue any of the majors that we have offered. So this is a bunch of our application information as well as requirements. Um, as you can see, we do our accept applications to the SUNY or the Common App. Um, and then the SUNY app does have a, uh, a supplemental application that just highlights whether or not you want to be a civilian student, regimental student, um, going for your engine license, things like that. And so we do also require an essay, high school transcript, optional for the test scores, and then one letter of recommendation. You can also see our application requirements for the different types of programs on your right hand side of your screen and our application deadline has been extended to April 30th. This is a list of all of our social media outlets that we are active on so Facebook, Instagram, as well as Twitter, and this is my contact information so if you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to reach out to me. And that's it, thank you and have a great evening everyone. Thank you so much. That was great. The next school you will hear from is Cedar Crest College. Hello, everyone. I'm going to get my screen sharing set up. Okay. Well, my name is Lauren Mann. I'm an admissions counselor at Cedar Crest College. Um, so welcome. So Cedar Crest was founded in 1867. We are a private liberal arts college for women. Um, we have about 1500 undergraduates, students, a nine to one student to faculty ratio, about 15 students in the classroom with 40% diversity. 
This lists out all of our academic majors that we offer at Cedar Crest, but I will say the ones that are highlighted in yellow are the ones that are most popular. So art therapy, criminal justice, education at all levels, forensic science, um, as well as nursing and psychology. So those are the most common applications that I do read, but we do have students kind of studying from all over. Um, these are a list of all the minors. Our students are very academically focused, so most of them will actually double major or they'll, they'll choose to major and minor in something as well. At Cedar Crest, we offer what's called the four-year guarantee. This guarantees that our students will be graduating in four years. We know that college is expensive, so we want to have you for your four years, and we don't want to keep you any longer than you need to be. This also kind of attests to how closely our faculty and staff are working together. Um, they're, you know, working so closely with the students, they can absolutely guarantee and reassure everybody that they will be graduating on time. So if you're not familiar, Cedar Crest is located in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Um, we're a part of something what's called the LVIC system. It stands for the Lehigh Valley Association of Independent Colleges. So there's a total of six colleges in the Lehigh Valley, including Cedar Crest. So there's also Lehigh, Lafayette, Muhlenberg, and Moravian. So Cedar Crest is the sixth college and all of us are kind of intertwined. We work together. We offer our courses to any of the students from the LVIC systems from those other schools. Um, so you can take courses, you can be involved in athletics, events, um, guest speakers, anything like that. Our students really kind of connect on a whole, which is really neat. We have NCAA Division Three Athletics. So that's gonna be basketball, cross country, track and field, field hockey, lacrosse, soccer, softball, swimming and diving, tennis and volleyball. Um, all of our athletes, they actually have some of the highest GPAs on our campus. Having a coach is just like having an additional sport system on our campus. So our girls really love, you know, having that additional sport system, being able to play a sport while in college, yet still being, you know, very academically focused, having academics be first in athletics second. We have over 50 clubs and organizations on our campus. Um, clubs and organizations are a wonderful way to get involved. It can allow you to branch out and try something totally different. Um, it can be a club related to your major. It can be a club related to a passion or something else, but it's a great way to meet new people and kind of get more involved in the campus community. We have a really unique opportunity, which is a guaranteed study abroad. Our students refer to it as the sophomore expedition. So this trip occurs during the sophomore year. Um, it is over spring break. It's about a seven to 10 day trip. It is entirely paid for by the college. So it's free. That's pretty awesome. Um, the only thing a student is required to pay for would be the passport or any additional spending money. The trip is to an entirely different location each year. Um, it's a really great way to have our students, you know, immersed in the culture to get them experienced to studying abroad and if they don't like it you know it's only a short seven to ten day experience but if they do love it you know it could be kind of the first step um, to studying abroad for an entire semester so this year the students are going to Costa Rica um, we moved the trip to August in hopes that they can still go and then the following year the current freshmen when they're sophomores they will be going to Morocco these are some images from some of the trips previously. So students have gone to London and Greece, really cool places. You'll see they'll go with their entire class, um, faculty and staff go with as well. It's a great learning opportunity, leadership opportunity. It's just a wonderful way for you to get immersed in a different culture and learn a lot of new things while you're a college student. We also guarantee student employment. About 30% of our students are employed on campus. You don't have to qualify for federal work study in order to be employed on campus, which is wonderful. Um, we have different leadership positions for our students, whether you want to be a student ambassador, a resident advisor, a first year mentor, things like that. Or you can have a regular job, whether you're working in the library or in the fitness center, something like that. This outlines the first year scholarships for our first year students. So a great thing about Cedar Crest is every single student that is accepted is at least receiving that $17,000 fellow scholarship. So you're at least getting $17,000. And then for our top high achieving students, they're rewarded up to $22,000. Um, that 22,000 presidential scholarship, those students are also automatically enrolled in our honors program. And they're also qualifying for some of our direct admit master's programs. 
Something else that we have is called the STAR program. It's another way to make Cedar Crest more affordable. So what this does is at least a student has a 3.25 coming out of high school and then maintains a 2.25 in college, they are automatically considered for STAR. STAR allows a student to attend Cedar Crest at the rate of their state institution. So for Pennsylvania residents, we'd be comparing that to Penn State University. Their tuition, as you can see, is $14,469. That would now be your Cedar Crest tuition. So taking our tuition from its original 42,000 down to 14,000 is a huge price jump. We really want our school to be affordable. We know a lot of students have to go to these smaller schools because or sorry, the larger schools because they are more affordable. So we're trying to make our small school affordable, just like the larger institutions. So the application process. So if any of you are seniors, we are still accepting applications for fall 2021. Um, in August, we will be opening the portal for fall 2022. Our average GPA is a 3.0 for those students applying. You can apply online um, via the common application or through Cedar Crest website. There is no application fee at all. We require a high school transcript, a personal essay or a graded paper, a letter of recommendation. You can submit up to three, but only one is required. And then SAT and AC CT scores. Right now they are waived because we understand due to COVID there was a lot of issues with students getting to testing centers, testing centers canceling. So we absolutely made those optional. If you do have the scores and you wish to submit them, you absolutely can. If you do not, you can choose not to. And then this is my contact information for anybody that would like more information about Cedar Crest, but thank you all so much. Wonderful, thank you. Um, all right, the next school that you will hear from tonight is Pennsylvania College of Technology. Uh, thank you, Matthew. While we, uh, I'm bringing up my screen, I'm going to introduce myself. I am Lisa, and I am one of the admissions counselors here. So let me get this here. So Pennsylvania College of Technology is a national leader in applied technology education. Uh, we provide our students real world settings while using the latest technology and equipment. And to give you an overview of who we are, I have a quick video that I would like to play for you. So Pennsylvania College of Technology has an average class size of 16. We keep our class sizes small because that gives the students the opportunity to have more face time with faculty who themselves are industry experts with relevant proven experience and they're bringing that experience into the classroom with them. And we do offer over 150 plus learning labs. Uh, as you just saw on the video, that's a representation of just a few of them. We do have a 98% graduate placement rate, which is allowing our graduates to start their careers right after graduation. And we have 100% or 100 plus diverse majors, and they come in three academic schools. Those schools are business arts and sciences, engineering technologies, and the nursing and health science. So under business arts and sciences, you're looking at uh, business administration, you're looking at graphic art, advertising art, baking, pastry, culinary. We have your emergency management, homeland security. We also offer human resources and restorative justice. Uh, engineering technology, some of the majors that we offer are going to be welding, your architecture, your construction management. Uh, we have your HVAC, we have uh, plastics and polymer, we have 
um, aviation, automotive, uh, we have diesel, landscape, forestry. And then under nursing and health sciences, we have uh, several options for nursing, but we also have uh, the programs within uh, physician assistant, physical therapy. We have radiology, surge tech, uh, paramedic technology. So these are just a, a small uh, version of what we offer. But we do offer them in bachelors, we have associates, we have certificates, and we also have uh, classes for non-degree students who just want to come in and take a few classes. For student life at Penn College, uh, as you can see by the picture, there's always something going on here. Uh, we are a Division III uh, school. We have 16 intercollegiate sports. We have 65 plus uh, student organizations and they run anywhere from like your student government, there will be your uh, community service, their special interest, uh, professional associations. We also offer on campus housing. Our students don't have to live on campus their first or second year. We do offer apartment style housing as well as your traditional dorm style. We are located in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. If you're an outdoor enthusiast, I'd like to say we can meet that for you. We have the Susquehanna River that runs directly beside us. So there's always options for kayaking, paddleboarding, canoeing. Uh, we have a vast amount of opportunity for your hiking, your biking. Uh, there's horseback riding and skiing. But if you're not quite an outdoor enthusiast, we also have um, more of our Williams Sport is a smaller city, but on a big scale. We offer art museums and we have a community art uh, center. We have casual dining, fine dining. So I think there, we pretty much offer a little bit of everything for everyone. Also, we're showing a picture uh, of the Wildcat mascot, they're standing with Little League players. So the Little League World Series Museum is just a mile from our campus. This is a representation of just a few of our successful alumni. As you can see, the different names are Google, we have Amazon, uh, there's the UMP, UPMC representative, uh, and Christina here on the end, she was actually uh, on the Food Network show Chopped and was one of the champions. So how do you become a Penn College Wildcat? It's really easy complete the application. So we offer two applications. We have our institutional application. We also are a member of the Common App. There is no application fee and we have no preference which one you use. We do ask that you submit your materials. Now materials consist of your academic transcripts, be it high school, college, uh, dual enrollment. We have APs and also meet placement requirements. Now Penn College is an SAT, ACT optional school. However, if you've taken the SAT or ACTs, we welcome you to send those scores. Uh, they need to come directly from College Board or AC to be considered official. But what they do is they may exempt you from our placement requirements, which is assessments in math and English. Those are the three steps to become a Penn College Wildcat. Again, it's really easy. We do offer rolling admission, which means our application opens in August and closes the following July, and we have open enrollment. You uh, submit your application, your materials, and meet placement requirements, and you offer acceptance into the college. We do have a vast amount of visit opportunities. We have what's called a self-scheduled personal tour. What that does is that allows you to come in, you meet with an admissions representative, you get to tour the active lab within your program of interest with a faculty member, so there's optional time for questions, and then you get to have a campus and a housing tour, and then you follow up with another visit with an admissions representative. We do have self-scheduled appointments with your admissions counselor, as well as Saturday tours, which will be coming in mid-April. We offer general campus tours. Those are held on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and we have uh, these same tours that are virtual on Sundays. Uh, we have countless virtual events that you can select from, and they are all available at the link that you see on the slide. I do have to jump in just for time. Sure, so, I'm done. We made it. We're perfect. Look at that. Perfect. Yep, that was perfect. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Um, all right, thank you. With that being said, the next school that you will hear from for the night is Florida Tech. All right, hi guys. 
Uh, thank you for joining this session. Let's see if I can get it started. So my name is Tonye and I am an admission counselor at Florida Tech and I work with all the students from Pennsylvania. So if you have already applied or if you're applying, then I will be your admission counselor here. So Florida Tech, uh, we're located in Melbourne, Florida. As you can see on the map here, it is uh, right on the beach. It's about an hour southeast of Orlando and we're right on the space coast of Florida. Florida Tech was actually founded uh, 63 years ago now by a couple of NASA scientists and engineers. And we were founded as an initiative to further educate people working over at NASA during the space race area. Um, back then there were, there were no schools in the area for people working over at NASA to further educate themselves. So there was a couple of people working there that came together and started Florida Tech. Since then, uh, we have expanded a lot Today, we have a closer to 190 different degree programs and it all ranges from bachelor's, master's and uh, doctor's degrees. Uh, we are considered to be a bit of a smaller school. Right now we have about 3,500 undergrad students. So the average class size at Florida Tech is about 20 students, uh, including our graduate students we are closer to 5,000 on campus. The way our student population is broken down is usually it's one third Florida residents, one third out of state students, and then almost one third international students. So we're, we're a very global campus and we have students from all over. Uh, we actually do get a lot of students from Pennsylvania. Um, all right, let's move on. So uh, Florida Tech, we have four colleges. We have uh, College of Aeronautics, this is for students who wants to become professional pilots or want to work within the airline industry. We have our own airport and our own aircrafts located about 10 minutes for, from campus. So if you're coming here to be a professional pilot, uh, you would go there for your flight lessons. And what we do is we directly admit students into their majors. So when you apply, you apply for a specific major and you declare your major before even coming here. So if you're coming for an aviation major, that means you'll be up in the air flying within the first week. Uh, we also have a great college of business. Um, for those of you who don't know the area, we are right on the space coast of Florida. So there's a lot of high tech companies in the, in the, um, around campus. And these are businesses, there is a great opportunity for our students in the College of Business for internships and uh, job opportunities. And most tech schools will have a great College of Business because of the industry around it. We also do engineering and science. That is mainly what we do. The College of Engineering and Science, that's where 75% of our students are enrolled in. Uh, we are considered to be Florida's main STEM university. And we have engineering majors, majors ranging from ocean engineering to aerospace, biomedical engineering, mechanical, uh, the list is long. And for science, we have the main ones like biology, chemistry, and physics, but we have a lot of unique and specialized ones like astronomy and astrophysics. We do astrobiology here, a lot of space science. Uh, we have all the biological sciences like marine biology, and then we do a lot of pre-med programs too. Uh, lastly, we do psychology and liberal arts. We have a few unique and specialized program uh, within the psychology department, such as the play, apply behavior analysis, and then also forensic psychology. So we do get a lot of students coming for um, psychology to Florida Tech. Our students, they do a lot of co-ops and internships. Since we admit students directly into their majors, uh, they can actually go out and get their first co-op or their first internship the summer after the freshman year, if you want to. So that's how early you can start uh, gaining, gaining some experience and earning some money. Uh, and because we're on the Space Coast, there are so many companies in and out, uh, around the area. We have SpaceX, NASA, Boeing, Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman. Uh, Disney is close by. So just to mention some, we also offer a fast track program, which lets you uh, get your bachelor's and master's in five years. So it will save you some time and money there if you think you want a master's degree as well. If you're in engineering uh, or science, 
your senior year, you're going to be spending a lot of time in our design center and you're going to be working across disciplines and you're going to be planning, designing, and executing a project that you're going to have to showcase by the end of the, your senior year. This showcase is open to the public and uh, professors, faculty, other companies, the ones I mentioned will be there. I've gone a couple of years and there is some amazing stuff that our students have built. We've seen aircrafts, rockets, mining robots for NASA, ROVs, uh, 3D printing of tissue, just to mention some. So there's a lot of hands-on opportunity as a student at Florida Tech. Like I said, I am the admission counselor uh, for anybody applying from Pennsylvania. So I'd love to work with you guys and talk to you more about the application process. We do rolling admission. So if you're a senior and you're still thinking about applying to Florida Tech, definitely do so because I'll review application all throughout somebody's senior year. If you are a junior, you can start applying as early as August, upcoming August now. We are open for uh, in-person visits. So if you wanna come for a campus visit, you definitely can do so. Uh, we have several times a day where we will do campus tours. If you're not able to come to Florida, um, which I understand, we have um, Amazon Prime was actually on campus a couple months ago and they were filming an episode of something called the College Tour where Florida Tech is episode two. So if you can't come, definitely check us out on Amazon Prime and I am excited to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's cool to hear that they did a campus tour thing. Um, awesome. Um, all right, folks, the next school that you will hear from tonight is Siwani, uh, the University of the South. Hi, everyone. My name is Leticia. I am an assistant director of admission at Sewanee. And so I will be um, showing a video today that's about five minutes long. And then um, I'm happy to provide a little bit more information after that. So let's just dive right into that. If you cannot hear, please let me know. Hi, I'm Taylor Baird. I'm a graduate of Swanee and I currently work in the Office of Admission. And I get to tell you a little bit about my home for the past 10 years. You might be thinking, hmm, Swanee, the University of the South, what does that entail? Well, the University of the South is so much more than a campus that we had to create new words for it. It's the mountain. It's our home on the Cumberland Plateau. It's the domain situated between Nashville and Chattanooga. It's a working farm, a 13,000 acre forest, a natural playground with trails to hike and rocks to climb. But above all, it's a community. That's Swanee. And it's a place that I hope you'll consider calling home one day too. The domain is where we live, eat, research, recreate, reflect, and compete. I mean, 30% of our students are scholar athletes competing on one of our Division III varsity athletic teams. It's a lot, and we like it that way. Our university motto, Eke Quam Bonum, or EQB, ensures that we push each other and appreciate each other while dwelling together in unity. You'll be sharing Swanee with about 1,700 other 17 to 22 year olds and the broader community. So there's rarely a dull moment here. While we're nestled in Tennessee, you're still gonna be encouraged and expected to engage with a global community. We want you to address global issues and engage in a way that connects Swanee with the rest of the world. This is a place where everybody stands up for what they think and for what they believe in. That dialogue across difference and that true discourse is the environment that we strive to cultivate. For example, we have deep roots with the Episcopal Church, but we know that it's important to create a healthy interfaith environment here for students as well. With the combination of intellectual rigor and community, Swanee will help you figure out who you are. As an institution, we've been exploring who we've been and who we are. We want to model that for students, that you're exploring those questions, and that asking questions and seeking solutions is commonplace. You can do that at Swanee because your professors are teachers and mentors first and researchers second. We believe in educating the whole person through the liberal arts education. That's what happens when you engage with your professors. You get out into the field 
and you wrestle with the questions that the world hasn't figured out the answers to yet. It's in that process that you will enhance your studies, hone your skills, and increase your postgraduate prospects. In hoping that you'll engage that way, we've made a commitment to you, the Swanee Pledge. And the commitment is simple. We pledge to provide funding for a summer internship or research opportunity during your time at Swanee. We also pledge that you'll be able to make global connections by providing access to a semester long study abroad program at no additional tuition cost. And finally, we pledge that you'll graduate in four consecutive years with at least one major. If you do not, you can study for an additional year at Swanee and no additional tuition cost. At Swanee, if you give your best in good faith, we will honor that dedication and effort. You won't even have to compete with graduate students for these opportunities, and in many cases, worry about the funding that make them possible. Swanee believes in access as much as we do excellence, which is why we're committed to meeting 100% of demonstrated financial need for all admitted first year students. We also recognize academic achievement. So in addition to need-based aid, we do offer academic scholarships as well. Our goal is to accept the most talented students for whom Swanee is the best choice, and then to provide the financial aid package that makes it possible for you to enroll here. That's the Swanee lens. We want to find strong fit students and guide you through the search and application process. Swanee is a common application school and there's no fee to apply. We also know that test scores aren't always the best indicator of a student's academic success. And that's why at Swanee we're test optional. That allows you to choose to submit the ACT, SAT, or no scores at all. So if you're ready to take this journey and opt into this experience, I hope you'll choose to apply to Swanee. I can't wait to see how you'll make this place your home and bring your perspective to our community. All right, thank you so much. So in addition to that, I will put a few things in the chat. And so just so you know, if you are interested in visiting campus, we are open right now for in-person visits and we do have a ton of virtual offerings as well. So we do have both. And um, we are currently not accepting applications anymore for current seniors. However, we will begin accepting applications for juniors um, within in your senior year in um, August. So just like everyone else said, our application will open, open up August 1st. Again, it's free, you apply through the common application and we definitely do a holistic review through the process. Another great thing, I know the video mentioned financial aid, but we also do have merit scholarships as well. And so when you are applying to Sewanee, you are automatically being considered for merit scholarships. So there's nothing else you need to do. You just submit your free common application and you are being considered for any scholarships that we do offer. Um, ranging from $5,000 all the way up to full cost of attendance, and it all kind of happens through the admission process. And then we require the FAFSA and the um, CSS profile to review you for financial aid. So I'll put more information in the chat, including my contact info. If you have any questions, feel free to follow up with me afterwards. Thanks so much. Thank you. That was great. Um, all right, the last uh, but definitely not least school that you will hear from tonight is Western Colorado University. Perfect. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for staying along with us. Uh, my name is Alejandro Alejandre. No, I did not have two persons or last names. You can call me Alex. I'm a regional director of recruitment for Western Colorado University, a four year public liberal arts institution that's located at the hearts of the Rocky Mountain in Gunnison, Colorado. Just to give a little bit of perspective of, we, of where we're located, uh, we're located in the southwest corner of Colorado. So just to give you a little bit of perspective, like I said, we're about four hours south of Denver. Now, it, we're in a really neat location, in my opinion. So we're in between two famous ski resorts, Crested View. It's about 30 minutes north of town. Like I said, it's a famous ski resort. Um, there's a lot of other things too, like mountain bike, hike, and the colors in the fall are blissful. Uh, we also have uh, Monarch, which is about 42 minutes east of town. So you're a big skier, big snowboarder. You're in between two famous ski resorts. Uh, we also have Harmons, which Harmons is about five miles south of town. It is the largest, uh, the largest outdoor recreational area in Colorado. It's over 8,000 acres, and that's where your outdoor activities will most likely take place. So rock climbing, hiking, mountain biking, 
Um, there's over 150 camping sites. A lot of the clubs will actually host campfires, bonfires, all there all the time. Uh, we also have Blue Mesa, which Blue Mesa is about five miles, 10 miles west of town. It is the largest body of water in Colorado. It's over 20 miles long, and that's where your water activities will most likely take place. So boating, um, paddle boarding, fishing, ice fishing, or you can have nas carne asada, especially during the summer. Golly, you hit the spot. So in a way, in all your Colorado adventure things to do. And now, like I said, Western Colorado University is a four-year public liberal arts institution. We uh, have over 100 areas of studies. Uh, average class sizes, 17, 84% of the professors at Western have, 84%, uh, sorry, of the classes at Western are taught by full-time faculty and 71% of the faculty at Western are 10 more degrees. So you definitely get that personal education and those professors are fully dedicated to your education. Yes, they are still doing research on the side, but they ultimately are there for you. So you can talk to them um, on a daily basis. You can go to the office hours. Uh, so you really get to build that per personal relationship with them. Now, some of the top majors that we offer in our school is business, biology, uh, recreation, or education, exercise, sports science. I would say anything with outdoors, that would be our bread and butter. I mean, we're surrounded by 1.7 million acres public land. So anything, like I said, bi wildlife, biology, recreation, and education, and MBS, anything of those majors are we're well known for. Uh, we also do have um, other STEM programs. Uh, we actually just added a computer science engineering school uh, which students are currently taking classes there at the moment and they're used to set the art equipment. Um, now we are fully dedicated to your success. So we offer different programs. For example, you, each student at Western is, is assigned an academic advisor in their field. That advisor will guide you from your first year to your last year at Western. You'll meet with them once or twice or as needed per semester to go over internship opportunities class, and, and also class scheduling. Uh, we also have Epic Mentors, which each student, regardless if they're transferring their first time freshman, they're gonna be paired with an upperclassman student at Western. That student will help you through your first year at Western, making sure you're doing all right and you have all the resources you need to excel. Uh, like I said, we offer different services, but we are fully dedicated to your success. Um, there's always something going on in Gunnison, even though, and I, I forgot to mention this in the beginning, we are a small, com a small community. So we got about, Gunnison is about 9,000 people, and that's including Western student enrollment of 3,000 students. So we have roughly about 26 undergraduate students and 400 graduate students. But even though it's a small little town, there's a lot of things to do outdoors in the community, and there's also a lot of things to do going on on campus on, the, on a daily basis. We have over 50 clubs and organizations. You have your academic club run in conjunction with an academic program. And then you also have your passion and interest club, which is self-explanatory, but there's always something going on, like I said. So your government allocates over $350,000. So like I said, there's a lot of events happening, on, happening all the time. Now, cost of tuition, tuition is uh, over $18,000. That's definitely below the national average of over 22. And 80% of the students receive some type of aid, some type of aid, and also 100% of those students are are considered for mayor aid. So we have scholarships that are acceptance, they go up to students uh, GPA for fall 2021. And so each school in Colorado, including us, like I said, uh, we're going to test optional for the mayor scholarships. Like I said, they're upon acceptance and they go off your weight GPA. Those scholarships range from eight to $10,000. That's an automatically scholarship you'll receive for four years at Western as long as you maintain the GPA of 2.75. So how do you become a Mountaineer? How do you apply to become a Mountaineer? You can apply to the common application uh, or you can apply to our direct application. Like I said, we're going to test optional. So the only things that we need is your your uh, transcripts. Uh, we do have an application fee of $30. So if you do decide to apply to our direct application, definitely uh, call me or you know call the missions office at Western and they'll give you the promo code to waive the application fee. Um, if you're below our 50 percentile of students getting admitted to Western, definitely submit anything that will help support your application, regardless if that's um, a letter of recommendations, personal statements, resumes. We have an optional, optional essay on our application, the promise, the promise why Western. Definitely do all that. We'll consider everything you provide for us before we make, before we make a decision. Uh, lastly, come and visit us. I mean, I would strongly recommend visiting your top three, top five school, schools before you make a decision. Uh, we are hosting in-person visits at the moment. We're probably one of a few schools in, in Colorado. Uh, those visits run Monday through Friday inside our prime request. Um, you can sign up for a campus visit at western.edu forward slash visit. 
If you can't make it on campus, definitely look at our virtual events and you can go to western.edu forward slash uh, recruitment events just to stay tuned with all the events that we have coming up. But if you'd like to learn more about Western or if you just have any questions and all, if there's anything I can help you with, definitely reach out to me. My contact information is there. So is the admissions office. But thank you so much. Thank, thank you, Mr. Thank you so much for your time. Sorry about that. Thank you. That was great. Um, and this whole thing was so great that we've gone right up to our time, which is always fun. Just means that we were having such a good time. Um, there's just a couple notes I want to share as we wrap up, but then we will end our time for this session. Um, as I close out of here, just a note that a survey will pop up. If you could fill that out, that'd be wonderful. Um, it helps us. Um, like I said, this was session two out of three. So if you have time to sign up for the last one, please do. That'd be great. Um, and there's that link that I started with. Um, that's the link that you will find the filming of this, but the whole fair, so you can go back and watch them more. Um, as I end, thank you once again for all these from to all these wonderful reps who shared so much. I was thrilled to hear about each of your really, really cool schools. Um, and thank you to other students who came. Um, I hope you all have a great night, have a great rest of the fair, um, and a great college search. Um, all right, everybody, that wraps up our time. Thanks so much. Have a good night. Thank you.